Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Carl. I'm a doctor from the Philippines. Now there are a lot of study techniques out there, such as rereading, highlighting, and summarizing notes from your textbook. But actually, all of them are not backed by science. So in this video, we're going to talk about the three most important study techniques that have actually been proven by science and which I used to do well in my exams during medical school. This might sound strange, but you have to test yourself before studying or do pre-tests before actually learning the material. And yes, you'll get all the answers wrong. You'll get anxious and maybe tell yourself that you must be stupid, that you will never learn or understand any of this stuff. But in this situation, you have to be patient with yourself and embrace the struggle and recognize that it's all part of priming your learning beforehand. Now, this is where we take advantage of the phenomenon called the hypercorrection effect. And it's when you thought you know the answer to a specific multiple choice question, but end up getting it wrong which then leads you to more likely remember the correct answer once you get it now what I used to do during medical school was to look for the end of chapter questions and try to answer them the best that I can sometimes I use sample exams or what they call samplex or mock exams that I got for my seniors in medical school just to test myself how much I know about the topic before I dive right into it and of course I got all the answers wrong and it made me very uncomfortable and anxious at that time but I just stick with it because I know that it will probably pay off in the long run no one ever knew that I got all the answers wrong so that's a relief for me so cut yourself some slack and recognize that doing this technique will ultimately give you the edge to score higher on your next exams now tip number two is spaced repetition. Now spaced repetition, as the name suggests, is when you study a material now and then wait for a reasonable period of time until you will almost forget what you learned and you will study that same material again. Now this is in sharp contrast to cramming, which is what we're all familiar with, where we tend to binge watch Netflix movies or anime series for the whole week and then do serious study only on the night before the exam. Yes, you might remember a lot of stuff for the next few days and maybe even get a decent score, but after a day or so you will have completely forgotten all about it and this is very important in medicine where we value long-term retention of study material because take for example the subject biochemistry which is heavily taught during the first year of medical school now if you somehow manage to survive biochemistry during medical school through cramming by the time board exam preparation starts almost all of the concepts you have previously learned will now seem foreign to you and we don't want that to happen now do we I found this technique very helpful because where I studied medical school our exams were conducted once a week every Monday. So for example, if I have a lecture on anatomy on Tuesday, as soon as I get home, I will finish studying the coverage for anatomy on that day. And on the following days, I will be studying other subjects like physiology or pathology. And then when weekend comes, when I will be preparing and studying for exams due on Monday, I will schedule my study in such a way that anatomy comes first because by that time, I will have forgotten all about what I learned last Tuesday. This has something to do with the so-called the forgetting curve, which was popularized by the German psychologist Ebbing house and basically what happens is that since I have almost forgotten what I have studied in anatomy because it was like several days ago it will take my brain more effort to actually remember those pieces of information the harder and the more mentally taxing it is to learn about something the more likely it will stick into your long-term memory Tip number three, the last study technique that has really helped me top my exams in medical school is interleaving. Interleaving is when instead of studying the same subject for a whole day or answering a set of multiple choice questions only on pathology, what you can do is to mix it up with other subjects as this will help your brain to form abstract generalizations across different subjects. So for example, instead of doing pathology flashcards only for today, try mixing it up with anatomy and microbiology flashcards or maybe even a 20 item multiple choice question on pharmacology. This will feel more frustrating and much harder but as I said, the more difficult and the more effort it requires, the more we will see tangible results. And this is true because the brain works like a muscle. Say you're at the gym. Now the harder you work and the heavier the weights that you're lifting, the bigger the muscle gains. Now on the other hand, if you don't feel your muscles getting sore after an hour of workout, it means you're lifting lighter weights or doing less intense exercises. It's somehow the same for learning. The greater the effort to retrieve the information, the stronger it gets encoded into our long-term memory. And because it requires more effort and more mental strain, therefore it will be more effective. Unfortunately though, this is the same mental discomfort that makes students avoid doing it. But you have to be aware of this and know that if you feel like it's hard, you're probably doing it right. And if you feel like studying is too easy, then you're probably not learning anything. And finally, this is the very reason why the study techniques of rereading, highlighting, and summarizing notes from your textbooks don't work quite as well as the study techniques we discussed. Because they're very easy to do, maybe because you're somehow assuming a 
passive role in receiving information from what you're studying, when you rather should be practicing retrieving it actively. If you find this useful, please consider sharing it with a friend or a family member who can benefit. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.